Thank you, Anna, <clears throat> and uh, welcome everyone to Rome. Uh, what I would like to discuss with you today is a transition, the transition of, of the HIV as well, because it is time we have the expertise on HIV. Most of us, particularly those that have a, a more, are more aged, that uh, the specialty on HIV is specialty on HIV, so dedicating the time to HIV. Now, with the change of HIV and the appearance of new infections, uh, probably is the time to broaden our mind and try to get uh, information regarding HIV as well uh, from other fields of uh, virology and perhaps not only virology. This is the reason uh, today I try to discuss with you <clears throat> one of the emerging fields uh, that um, captured my attention uh, while being uh, in a hospital, is the largest uh, European hosp pediatric hospital, there's a big numbers so that let me think uh, how to match uh, uh, theory and practice and also how to get uh, information uh, and the knowledge that let me use it uh, for other viruses that are part of my expertise like HIV. So this is the people that works with me and that I thank um, mostly because of uh, the activity that they do that is uh, fantastic. I'm just a speaker of, uh, their, <coughs> of the, their work. So talking about, uh, the, the session is about respiratory uh, syncytial virus and et cetera. I would uh, try to broaden it because of thinking about only few known uh, respiratory infections doesn't help because we are just reproducing what has been done and what is doing uh, now. We need to, to think in a different way because on, uh, ma uh, matching the knowledge of virology to the clinics, uh, we realize that the respiratory viruses play a different game. Indeed, uh, still uh, they are the major cause of mortality in the world, uh, but not only respiratory viruses, but also there are informations that are not fully true. This slide is wrong. So I bring it uh, to your attention essentially because it, it splits the different parts of the respiratory um, uh, tree uh, according to the different viruses that infect it. That is not true at all. So uh, all the viruses can infect all the parts of the respiratory uh, apparatus uh, depending on the conditions of the apparatus itself. Just to give you an example, the rhinoviruses uh, have an optimum temperature of growth at 33 degrees. Therefore, normally, normally, they infect only the nose, normally. But um, if you generate conditions by which uh, uh, the virus uh, is, uh, has the chance to reach uh, the alveoli, and in the alveoli the temperature is 33, like is in intubated people, you have uh, pneumonia by rhinoviruses that has a mortality of 10%. Therefore, uh, uh, knowing uh, the clinics and knowing the viruses help in reshaping this slide and uh, reconducting uh, the, the, also the diagnosis uh, and the diagnostic system to a proper way. This is a review made by Luna, my collaborator, that uh, in uh, 2021 that showed how the number of systems that we have today available, so many, but there are two elements that uh, are crucial for the modern and the future diagnostics of respiratory viruses. <clears throat> One major point from the clinical standpoint is time. Time in uh, microbiology is crucial. We come from HIV, and HIV is a vi one of the few viruses in which uh, time is not mandatory. You can give uh, a viral load in one day, in three days, in one week. More than that, I don't think so. But many give it even later. Or uh, resistance tests uh, should be given in maximum 15 days, but very few do it. In the case of uh, respiratory viruses, uh, you need to work in hours because it is an acute infection. Therefore, time is a major factor to be mm, kept in mind. And the second element that has a similar relevance, searching everything that can be clinically relevant. And you see that the majority of cases, uh, the tests that are available, search only what you want to search. And don't consider that the viruses that can infect uh, the uh, respiratory apparatuses, apparatus are far more than what uh, are thought. Therefore, um, what is important uh, is uh, thinking what we know, then the test uh, is chosen, not the opposite. So if I am in an emergency room and I want to know very quickly what's going on in a patient, uh, uh, antigen test might have a space, might. I'm not in favor, but in general, it is cheap, fast, uh, reliable in terms of positivity, not in negativity. So the positive predicted value is near 100%. <clears throat> negative predicted value is unacceptable. Therefore, if a result is positive, we know that the dead virus is present. If the result is negative, 
we have no idea what's going on in that patient. And we have any way to go to molecular test. And the movement is uh, from left to right, um, so going toward the multiplex. Why? Because um, many viruses, this is virology that teaches us, uh, many viruses can uh, live at the same time in the same place. And we will return <coughs> in the second part of my presentation regarding this issue. So, uh, particularly children can have uh, co-infections, and this co-infection can be advantageous for the virus, disadvantageous for the virus, but anyway, we cannot predict uh, in principle which is which. Therefore, uh, searching for uh, flu, searching for uh, uh, respiratory syncytial virus today is a mistake. I know and I understand and I realize that many have a constraint in terms of uh, money, constraint in terms of quality of the lab, etc., etc. But if we want to look at the future, this is not the way uh, things should be done. If we want to <coughs> apply the new concepts uh, to the clinics, uh, this, is this is what should be our practice. So, so returning to clinics, uh, certainly we have the different uh, pathologies uh, that are typical in our um, uh, uh, situation, so different infections from, uh, from nose to uh, alveoli. But as we said, we cannot assume that everything is present in a specific place. We need to search for it. And also, the making a test on the basis of seasonality is another mistake. This is another wrong uh, uh, slide. Is a slide that shows a general seasonality of nearly all viruses. It's not true. Those in blue <coughs> are seasonal. The others are not. Therefore, uh, thinking that uh, the problem of respiratory viruses uh, uh, appears in uh, fall and disappears in April is another mistake. So, and we need to consider this uh, and uh, be more practical and uh, bring our expertise to clinicians, because this is an area that is dominated by clinicians. Usually the laboratories uh, tend to be just the technicians of uh, the clinicians. Uh, mm, this should not be the case. And we need to teach our colleagues' clinic, uh, clinics uh, that uh, they have to know what is uh, in the, the clinical environment. They cannot ask for flu. They have to know what uh, should be asked. So we have a, a team. Uh, a laboratory and clinics that work together, and you will see some papers on that, uh, in which uh, we decide what to do on the basis uh, of, uh, of the clinical needs uh, and the virological knowledge. So, uh, the acute respiratory infections, uh, first of all, we said uh, may vary some of them during the season, but not so much. They vary for the age. You probably don't see so much uh, because it's too small, but every group uh, includes age uh, and every color is a different virus. And you see that the, 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 the pyramids, uh, uh, the, 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 the groups are not the same for a different age from uh, infants and etc. So there are a substantial differences. So then COVID came. And COVID has disturbed uh, definitely our life. We were discussing with Professor Mussini that I don't think we will ever return back uh, to before COVID uh, in general. But also in terms of clinics, uh, the situation is no longer the same as it was in the past. First, uh, because COVID is not COVID. Uh, this is a situation we sequenced, uh, thanks to Rosanna, we, uh, we sequenced all the patients that came to, the, to our hospital. And you see the different colors mean that uh, a COVID virus, uh, SARS-CoV-2, is a typical Darwinian pure virus, pure. That means uh, no prisoners. So if it wins, it wins. Not, nothing else remind, re, uh, rest uh, behind. So for HIV, we know we, we are increasing the number of different uh, subtypes and genotypes. Same it is for HCV, not for COVID. For COVID, you see the different colors. One, one is better than the others. All the others disappear, but something is happening within Omicron. I do agree with the, the concepts uh, uh, driven by WHO, saying uh, now let's call them variants within Omicron, because it is uh, indeed another virus. You see that at the end, a uh, few new infections, but uh, some different uh, variants uh, or subvariants tend to uh, survive together. So this means that the advantage given by uh, some mutations is not so big as it was in the past, 
Therefore, uh, this virus is adapting to humans. This is a situation that probably will last, uh, but those that are not virologists or microbiologists don't know and don't know how to read uh, this data. Continue to think about the continuous evolution of the virus uh, like uh, we have uh, something new that happens uh, in the future. But uh, COVID, uh, as I said, uh, changes uh, itself, uh, but changes also the story of respiratory viruses. Why? Because uh, it is a very strong virus uh, that has one of the major power in infecting many of the cells of the respiratory apparatus. Therefore, we need to, to apply for, to this concept uh, one uh, issue that is typical of microbiology. The worst enemy of a virus is another virus. Even though sometimes they are good companion, but in general, one is against the other. And when COVID comes, uh, the other viruses disappear. This is a situation at our hospital. You see in 2020 and 2021, when I mean zero, I mean zero. Zero new infection by other respiratory virus. We searched in the emergency room all the viruses always. And this is the result. Zero from uh, April 2020 up to May 2021. Zero. Only COVID. So, and then, and the scale uh, is uh, the same for different years, burst. So after COVID uh, disappeared, that is not correct, but uh, we adapted to, to, to SARS-CoV-2 and vice versa, the viruses came back with a shape that is not the same as it was in the past. This is the curve of 2020 and 2021 in our hospital. You see in the different colors are the different viruses. You see that there is a, one virus that rests, uh, remains always, orange, rhinovirus. Rhinovirus is the least sensitive to the effect of SARS-CoV-2 against the other viruses. Then uh, the other viruses reappear from more or less July, August. July, August, you shouldn't have uh, any respiratory syncytial virus or anything else, but they appeared earlier than it was supposed to be. You see that uh, the respiratory syncytial virus uh, uh, written here, the gray area on the, on the right is uh, A, group A, but then you go today, the, the picture is different because we have a percentage and we have uh, the, uh, each color is a different virus, and uh, <clears throat> each group is a different period, the seasonality, let's call. You see that some viruses are definitely seasonal, so influenza, uh, respiratory syncytial virus, and metapneumoviruses, all the others are not. And uh, this year, respiratory syncytial virus B is the most relevant uh, compared to A. But you see from the right that adenoviruses, uh, Boca viruses, uh, and uh, one of the coronaviruses, etc., uh, etc., et rhinoviruses in particular, do not have a seasonality. So they always work within our apparatus, while others are more seasonal. So thinking that uh, the diagnostics of uh, respiratory viruses uh, has to be done particularly in the winter time, I think it is a mistake, particularly in the hospitals where, like in our case, we have a huge amount of immunosuppressed people because we have one of the largest centers for bone marrow, allogenetic bone marrow transplants in the world. And therefore, we have to consider uh, the immunosuppression as the normality and not uh, the anormality. Therefore, uh, depending on the population that we have in our hospital, searching uh, and the diagnostic of uh, viruses uh, is uh, important over 12 months uh, the, uh, over the year. So, let me go to the second part, the co-infection. This is an issue that uh, has been uh, discussed but never applied. Essentially because we companies uh, tend to do what the clinicians ask, simplicity. I need to have an answer to uh, treat our patients. And since we have a treatment only for respiratory syncytial virus, uh, SARS-CoV-2 and flu, therefore we need to know only these three viruses. Without uh, uh, remembering the other, the other viruses might compete, might be neutral, might be uh, advantageous for the most pathogenic virus. So a uh, full knowledge helps in understanding the prognosis of the patient, particularly in the emergency room, when the patient comes in emergency room and the doctor has to decide where this patient has to be sent. Home, in the regular world, in emergency room, intensive care. So, and uh, we can predict it uh, thanks uh, to the characteristics uh, of the viruses that uh, are present uh, in, uh, in, uh, in that patient. Because remembering that uh, 
co-infections uh, are irrelevant from the clinical standpoint. The point of co-infections uh, uh, can bring uh, us uh, to different uh, play places. Uh, two viruses can interfere one against the other, interferon and others. In this case, viruses are less dangerous uh, than uh, they are supposed to be when single. They, it can be neutral, so the two viruses grow separately, but this can be dangerous for the patient because uh, if uh, one infects a type of cell and the other infects another type of cell, I have a disepitalization of the whole uh, uh, respiratory apparatus that can be dangerous. But in some cases, they can have a synergy. One virus helps the other in replication. In the majority of cases, unfortunately, it is, uh, uh, the viral interference is very rare, so we need to consider it. Uh, what do we know? We are just at dawn, at the beginning of the knowledge. This is one of the papers that we published uh, this year that shows that just in general, the co-infection are irrelevant for viruses. But virus plus bacteria, you can see at the bottom right panel, are relevant in terms of intensive invasive uh, ventilation. And in terms of death, uh, we have a paradox. So right uh, is in favor of uh, single infection, left uh, in favor of, of uh, multiple infections. So it seems that um, single infections are more relevant than uh, multiple infections. But this is um, a very nice uh, uh, pie, uh, the Kizin pa paper, in which all the ingredients are pulled together. So young, adults, uh, different viruses, one against more, and uh, I think uh, we need to go beyond it, uh, reconsider all the viruses that uh, play the game, knowing that the bronchiolitis can be given by RSV, but by other causes. We know that pneumonia can be given by flu, but can be given also by SARS-CoV-2, can be given by rhinovirus in certain conditions, and et cetera. So we need to rethink uh, what is uh, the, uh, the, the situation of our single, our single patients. So let's start to see what the, the papers say. But um, we are still in transition uh, toward um, more, more knowledge. So <coughs> this is a paper that shows one important thing. The co-infections in adults are far, far less than in youngsters. So in uh, children, we have uh, more co-infections, 35%, versus adults. But this does not mean the children are more sick because they can be irrelevant in terms of co-infection. So they start to see that adenoviruses and rhinoviruses tend to have more chances to, to stay with others compared to the other. Now, these are all data of our hospital driven by about 5,000 5, patients. And you see, first of all, the age by which each of the viruses is dominant is completely different. Left, right, right panel. So without entering details, it is quite clear that uh, uh, according to the maturity of the uh, immune system and the maturity of the epithelium, the different uh, viruses uh, infect uh, at different age the same, uh, the same apparatus. Then, this is a work of, Ch of Chiara Di Maio, you see that uh, in about uh, 400, 4,000 uh, positive samples, uh, the s about 70% are, there is a mono infection. In all other cases, about 30%, there is a co-infection, sometimes dual, sometimes up to four and more viruses uh, in some particular cases. Uh, and uh, this is not, no difference, let me go back. This is from the uh, inner part of the hospital. This is from the outer part of the hospital. That is the, the, the emergency, the children that come from outside uh, with respiratory symptoms. We tested only patients with respiratory symptoms. So there is no bias regarding circulation without symptoms. And you see that more or less the results are, are the same. What, the, what does it show? The analysis uh, that has been done by Chiara. Essentially, you see in red in the right panel that uh, some viruses uh, tend to dance on their own. Uh, some examples uh, are uh, the influenza and, uh, uh, and others in red, while other viruses tend to stay with others. And uh, now the next step of this search is matching being alone or being together as a factor that regulates the, uh, the pathogenicity. I can anticipate the respiratory syncytial virus definitely is more dangerous in youngsters alone because it has no competition. So the damage given by respiratory syncytial virus is very strong. And uh, trying to study the, the combination, <coughs> you see that some viruses tend to stay more together 
This is qualitative test, so not uh, number, uh, co-infections versus non-infection. So it's a world uh, that uh, we need to study more in depth uh, in order to understand which is the story and the situation of these patients. Uh, this knowledge uh, is uh, really nearly absent uh, in literature. So going to the conclusion, I think uh, that we are in transition, as I said at the beginning, from no knowledge to full knowledge, and we need to invest uh, on, uh, on this area as virologists and, and clinicians, because this is an area that belongs to virologists and clinicians, expert in this area. This is not a matter of just seeing whether there is the, the virus that I'm searching. Viruses that infect the respiratory uh, apparatus, as I said, they are many. So this burden is heavy, and we, with the exception of RSV and influenza viruses, there is not so much knowledge about it. Co-infections are commonly present, but not necessary. Their presence means worst uh, outcome. It, we need uh, to understand when some viruses are more dangerous uh, alone, when they are together, how they play the game, and uh, next, uh, uh, how to diagnose them. I'm personally in favor of the multiplex, uh, essentially because uh, the cost can be modulated and can be embedded within a, redu a reduction of uh, the other costs. For example, the patients that have uh, some respiratory viruses, uh, we published it, I didn't present it, do not undergo antibiotics. And they are sent home uh, very simply. So we spare other money, we spend more in the lab, but we spare other type of money. So the matter of cost is also negotiation and understanding that our, our diagnosis is not made only because of cost. But the cost is a matter of the hospital, not of the lab. So we need to, to be able to invest, to invest in it. We need probably to, to decide what we want. Screening, antigen test, but screening. Screening is not clinics, it's screening. Uh, rapid diagnosis, but today we have multiplex in 50 minutes, 5-0. So uh, this is not an issue necessary uh, the, to use a simple uh, molecular test, but it is an option. But in general, for knowledge and treating at best our patients, probably the multiplex is the one uh, that plays the game, taking into account that uh, the turnaround time particularly is the one that we need to consider. Giving a result of respiratory viruses two days after the sample arrives in our lab is, is not a mistake, it's useless because the patient has already been sent home, is already in, in intensive care, or et cetera. So we need to be timing with the characteristics of the disease. If, if we're not timing, the perception is that the lab is useless. Thank you.